How's it going guys? My name is Tavares and today we're going to be stripping my cheap Fast and Furious Lamborghini Murcielago's interior. And we're starting with this. Okay. Um, okay. That's... Um, eh. 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 That wasn't so hard. All right, okay. There's no seat in here, but that's all right. And, uh, I don't know why I say Lambos aren't comfortable. Oh, I can't see anything. So if you guys are new to the channel, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoy it. I'm having a pretty good time in my new Lamborghini. Lamborghini is not having as good a time as I am because uh, it needs some work. This, if you guys didn't know, is my 2003 Lamborghini Murcielago, and it was screen used in The Fate of the Furious. Again, no, no. That's a million dollar show car. So since this car was a movie car, it meant that the movie studio made this car as good as it could look on camera. And that meant that it didn't really have all the details to make it good up to, let's say, five feet away. It also made sure that the actors were as safe as possible with stuff like this roll cage and that racing seat. But since I want an actual car that I can actually drive on an actual road, I need to strip all this out or we're gonna turn it back to stock. Well, turn it back to a stock looking configuration where it looks and drives like a real Lamborghini. But since we're talking about stripping stuff back and then making it look presentable, that gives me a really good opportunity to introduce today's sponsor, Dollar Shave Club. So we all have our everyday grooming routines from showering to shaving to brushing your teeth. Personally, I wake up every morning and I take a shower, I come to the shop, and I check if my cars are on fire. But no matter what your personal routine is, Dollar Shave Club has everything you need to make you look, feel, and smell your best. Right now, they have a great offer where you can get their shave, shower, or oral starter set, each for only five bucks. The shave starter set comes with an executive razor and a three ounce tube of their Dr. Carver shave butter. This stuff is freaking awesome. The oral care starter set comes with this weighty toothbrush and a trial size version of the Superba Peppermint Kick toothpaste. And the shower starter set comes with three trial size versions of their Amber Lavender Body Cleanser, Citrus and Hawaiian Ginger Face Cleanser, and Sage and Black Pepper Shampoo. So you can join the club with one of these starter sets for only five bucks. After that, the restock box ships regular size product at a regular price. You can get this exclusive deal at dollarshaveclub.com slash tab. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash T-A-V. Go check it out right now. So let's begin. We're starting with the interior and the interior starts back here, oddly enough, because of this thing. This is called a roll cage. And the reason why you'd have a roll cage in a car is if it rolls over, it won't collapse on itself. These cars are actually known for not having a ton of structural rigidity on the top. Now, when this was used in the filming of Fate of the Furious, they had to have something that protected actors in case something happened. And they built this roll cage. Actually, the quality is not too bad at all. They made this part removable, that part removable, and all these on these little 10 millimeter bolts. Unfortunately, I have to take out this entire roll cage because there's no rear window in the car. And when there's no rear window in this car, especially with a straight pipe exhaust, that means that all that exhaust, all the carbon monoxide, basically goes into the cabin and makes me feel really sleepy. So in order to start on taking apart the interior, we're gonna have to take apart this roll cage, starting from the back to the front. Let's get to work. All right, now that we got all the seats and uh, partially the roll cage taken out, I wanted to show you why I'm not keeping this roll cage in. Now this roll cage 
is, uh, it's actually a pretty nice cage. It goes all the way up, and then from here it goes into uh, the back. The problem is, this does not have a five-point harness. Uh, a five-point harness would essentially mean you don't submarine in the event of a crash, but this is only a four-point harness. Uh, I think it does have an anti-submarining device. I can't really tell. I'm not a racing person, you guys can let me know. But uh, in any case, I don't want a four-point harness in my Lamborghini. I'd rather just use the stock seat belts, which go right here. So uh, we have to take this whole thing out. Um, it is bolted down, down there. We have to take this out. CD changer. Actually, I wonder what kind of CDs are in here. We'll find that out later. And uh, it's bolted down right here. Now, these are just regular 7 16 bolts, and they are riv nutted into the frame right here. So this is all able to be taken out. Hopefully, I don't have to uh, remove the doors. But you guys might have seen this guy. His name is Sean, and uh, he runs an awesome company called EMF. Well, uh, you can't really see that. Right th there we go. Uh, EMF uh, Audio Labs, Car Audio, that's uh, that's what you do. Uh, so the reason why we're taking all the interior out is not only uh, are we gonna redo all the interior, but we're actually putting some aftermarket components into this car as far as audio. Uh, Sean is a bit of a uh, mad scientist when it comes to this stuff. So we are going to build an audio system into this car because that is, uh, it's not, not a good head unit, and this is not a good uh, sound system because it doesn't have a sound system. Isn't that right? That is right. Let's get back to work, let's take this out, let's take all these panels out and see what we're working with. All right, sit rep, this is how you take out a roll cage from a Lamborghini Murcielago. It's a little bit harder than I thought. So if you take a look, here's a roll cage. It goes from here all the way up to the roof and all the way down. You see this rusty panel? That is not the car. That is a roll cage mounting bracket. And there's eight bolts right here all around. We took those out and we realized that we can't take the roll cage out. It is actually stuck up against the roof and I don't want to cause any damage to the car. So what we're going to do is we're going to cause damage to the roll cage. I'm just going to cut it right here and the same over there and hopefully we can move this out and then we can pivot it and take it out. And then we will finally be rid of this roll cage even though it's kind of cool and I kind of like it but we definitely don't need it in a road car. Okay, um, pivot it, uh, the other way, the other way. The, the this way or the other the way? The other way, the other way. Yep, more. Cause I gotta get, get it over, yep, there we go. There we go. Now if we can go. Put it down. Put it, put it. You, you good? Woo! Okay, this is what's left of my Fast and Furious interior. We had to do a lot of work. This actually took a long time. 
to cut out because I didn't want to ruin any electrical equipment. There was a lot of wires around uh, all of these bars and I had to put a sawzall in there and it was, uh, well, it was real sketchy. Also, take a look at the amount of rust on the bottom of this uh, roll cage bracket. Uh, everything was bolted on with some uh, quite small bolts, so I'm not sure that this would have been great in an accident. Uh, I didn't want to test that. So here's something that concerned me with the roll cage, the fact that this was right behind the uh, driver's seat. It was actually uh, right above it, so in case of an accident, your head would most likely hit this thing, so that had to go. And uh, also, it was fouling on a lot of the uh, roof right here. You can see that, uh, yeah, it took some roof material out with it. But we got it all out. Uh, this was actually a bolt out affair, which was not bad, but everything else, uh, yeah, yeah, that's uh, not looking great. Not sure I can reuse that, but now this is just gonna be scrap metal or I'll use it for something else. It'll be recycled into something else, but uh, this car will never have a roll cage again. And that's a good thing because I can actually get into the car now. And I need to get another seat, obviously, but all the interior is gonna get recovered. I'm not sure what I'm gonna go with. Uh, I'm not sure what uh, scheme I'm gonna go with. I think I'm gonna do a little bit more upscale, maybe something like an LP640-ish. But take a look at the seat. It's not looking too bad at all. It has some cracks on the bottom, but that can be redone. We have a CD changer. I don't know what CDs are in it. Probably should have uh, taken it out, but that's not a big deal. And we have more of this rusty mess known as a bolt-in roll cage. Now, if we look in the car, that's another thing altogether. All that rust led to this, and uh, I cleaned it up as best I could. This is actually not metal, this is a sound deadening material, and uh, the, uh, the bottom of this is uh, made of aluminum. So, aluminum does not rust, it does corrode, but there shouldn't be any rust there. I do have to take out this uh, center console, and that's gonna be kind of a pain in the butt. However, we have to measure out and we have to cut out some stuff for the uh, subwoofer that's going over there. So the center console is gonna stay in place for now. The thing I'm most concerned about right now is the fact that I cannot take the key out of the ignition. For some reason, the key does not come out. So the key right now, this is in the accessory position, and that's the on position. I can't take it out. I can't try to start the car, nothing. It just sticks here. So I think I'm gonna take out the ignition cylinder as a whole and try to take it apart like that. And this is a big problem as well. This is a shifter and it's been welded at an angle and uh, this weld is basically where the shifter connects to the uh, rod and the transmission. And that's not great because in order to get this entire piece out as one piece, I either have to cut it, which I'm probably gonna do, or I have to take out the entire transmission, which I definitely have to do uh, for some other maintenance items. So if we look down there, uh, yeah, I'll see if I can maybe take some of that out. I'm not sure. Yeah, this is gonna be uh, is gonna be one hell of a project. But uh, we got the interior out. We got the radio out, which was not that big of a deal. And there's so much room for activities. Everything looks pretty good. Uh, nothing seems out of place. It's not like my Gallardo where there was a bunch of hacks and and mods done to the uh, wiring. All the wiring is stock, even though it's it's all just kind of put together in that one corner. So I have to uh, put everything back in its rightful place. But this car is looking to be, well, the bones of it are pretty strong. So I guess Mark was right when he made that assessment. Now, if we take a look back here, we'll see that there's way more room to do stuff back here. I mean, you could put a turbo here, you could put a turbo there. I'm not gonna do a turbo. I think this is gonna be an NA build. I think this engine is gonna have that F1 sound that I know it can make. And the first thing to make that a reality is uh, changing out that uh, stupid exhaust. So uh, that's gonna be coming up soon. And uh, if any of you are wondering why there are no panels over here, usually there's like cover panels, they're all made of carbon fiber, and it usually looks a little bit better. Let me show you this. I got a bunch of spare parts with the car. Look at that. All these are carbon fiber panels. These are the uh, engine panels and I have extras uh, because these were from multiple cars. They did have multiple cars in the movie. So I have doubles of these and doubles of these and I have two rear windows. These are actually quite uh, thick. Look at that. Yeah, so that's going in. I have some grills right there. I have the interior bits and I have some uh, more miscellaneous items right there. So this car should be sort of complete, 100%. Also, I have a hood, which is made of carbon fiber. 
super light. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with that. I don't think there's anything wrong with my hood, but uh, we can always, you know, we, we can, I don't know, we can make a skateboard or something. Uh, and a spare door panel, I believe. So, uh, all that is gonna be going back into the car at some point. I need to get the interior uh, done. So we're gonna be taking more stuff apart. I have to take out the center console and the entire dash, but that's not gonna be today because today I am going to be uh, helping out Sean with making this box. But you guys are gonna see that in one of the next videos. By the way, for anybody wanting to know what the trunk or frunk of a Mercy Lago looks like, it's actually quite large. I can fit two carry-ons in here and you see that I have some spare parts. This is a uh, broken mirror, which in itself is probably like $2,000, but it's all broken here and here. So I'm probably gonna get a new one. And also I have these. These are, uh, I don't know, custom made, and they go right here for that Batman look. I don't, I don't, I don't know why they made that, but yeah. So we're gonna be putting an amp in there and uh, you can follow that along in the next episode. So that's gonna be it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, little foray into my Lamborghini. Um, we are gonna be taking it apart uh, some more and putting some stuff back to make it a little better, make it sound better, make it look better and perform better and just be better in general. But until next time, this is me reminding you guys that on cars like this that are being taken apart and put back together in wonderful shape, hopefully. You guys need a wrench every day.